In state news, the GOP convention is occurring this weekend at the Grand Forks uh, Lair Center, where Republicans will nominate either Governor John Hoven or Fargo architect Paul Sorum as their U.S. Senate endorsement this fall. They will also decide which person will represent them in the state's U.S. House elections. The U.S. House race includes Rick Berg, Kevin Kramer, J.D. Donahue, and Dwayne Hendrickson. North Dakota Poet Laureate and Jamestown College Writer-in-Residence Larry Wywoody will be a voting delegate at the convention and joins us now to discuss this weekend's events. Hey Larry, uh, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Rich. Well, first of all, uh, you know, why did you become uh, interested in politics? Well, probably I was radicalized by my father who was a history teacher and uh, I also taught civics, which would be, you know, how governments run and all that. So that even when I was young, I knew that uh, the U.S. was not a democracy. In other words, it's not one vote for, you know, a majority. And if you get a majority of the presidential votes, you win. It seemed a lot of people were confused about that a couple of elections back. Huh? And uh, so he taught me a lot, and he was radicalized by the nonpartisan league. I believe that he knew uh, Wild Bill Langer, who was, a, was one, first a governor here and then a U.S. senator, who came out of the nonpartisan league uh, that was organized originally by Arthur Townley here in North Dakota, and then it moved into Minnesota and South Dakota. So I, I think that's why my interest. I, I think it was, I received a further hit when uh, John Kennedy was assassinated. I thought, whew, is this what's going on in our government? And then. Uh, maybe a downer when uh, Richard Nixon was president. Mm -hmm. I started, I stopped paying my taxes. <laughs> they asked me why and I said, I didn't want to support a crook. And they said, well, how do you know he's a crook? And I said, well, that's what it turned out to be, isn't it? <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, that's, I guess that's the beginning of my, the beginnings of the, my interest in politics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so why do you believe that you were kind of uh, chosen to be a voting delegate this year at the convention? I'm not sure. Uh, I presume it's because I voted in this, in this area. We bought a house and moved into the area about three years ago. And uh, we voted here last election, so I presume that that's how I, my name came up. Uh, uh, I registered as a Republican this time around. I was a pretty strong Democrat uh, being brought up in the NPL. Through uh, a lot of my voting life until about the time of uh, Jimmy Carter, I don't know, he just kind of turned me off to the, the party and then uh, recently I guess I've been turned off more. But anyway, so that's how I'm registered this year. I've also been registered as an independent and uh, I just presume they saw my name. They called me up and uh, asked if I would serve as a voting delegate and I said, sure. I'm kind of interested in a couple of the candidates. so. That's why. Well, when we look at the U.S. Senate endorsement, you know, we have Governor John Hoven and the Fargo architect uh, Paul Sorum. You know, which candidate do you think is going to be the best matchup against a Democrat? Well, I think best matchup to run against them? Yeah. To run against those two? To run against either of them or the best one of those two to run? To run. Well, it'd be Hoven. I mean, I don't think there's any. Uh, competition, really, he, he has, what, something like an 87% uh, public approval presently? Mm -hmm. And I think people don't know Mr. Sorum. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I know that. I heard him talk once. I think he knows what he's talking about, but I don't think he has a chance, frankly. Mm -hmm. So are you, when you said you were interested, are you interested in Hoven then? Yeah, I'll vote for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, North Dakota Attorney General, also uh, Heidi Heitkamp, ran against Hoven for governor a few years back, and, uh, but she didn't decide to run against Hoven again for the, this U.S. Senate endorsement. Uh, do you think that was a good idea for her, or what do you think? Absolutely. Actually, I thought of uh, writing a letter to Heidi and say, Heidi, please don't become the sacrifice for this, this Senate race because uh, I like her a lot. And uh, in fact, she's related to my son. She's my son's wife's aunt. So I thought a writer would say, don't be a sacrifice, because when she ran against Hoven, he, he didn't have the popularity he has now, you know, and he won anyway. So now that he's got something like 87% of the popularity of, you know, the state, of mm -hmm. approval, I think it's called in the state, uh, 
gee, I don't see how anybody can beat him. Yeah. Frankly. And they were even talking about, you know, before Byron Dorgan wasn't going to um, run for re-election, that Hovind would have beat Dorgan. Do you think that's true? Uh, Hovind would have beat Conrad. Uh, they, they, yes, they took a poll first. That's, I think that's how his interest started building. When Conrad's race came up the last time they took a poll, and Hovind could have beat him. Anyway, his percentage points ahead and, you know, the local Rasmussen had taken at that time. And then uh, the same thing happened uh, this time around. They took the poll, it was a little bit farther back. And I think he was 10 or 12 points ahead of Dorgan. And that wasn't released, but, oh, you know, a couple weeks later, Byron said, well, I, th you know, I think I'm not going to run this time. I it's not as much fun as it used to be. Well, of course, he'd seen the poll results, and <laughs> nobody wants to be a loser. You know, he's been there for, gee, 30 years? I think something like that. Yeah. Quite a long time. 28, anyway, I'm sure. OK. So when we look at kind of these House candidates, uh, we have Rick Berg, Kevin Kramer, J.D. Donahue, Dwayne Hendrickson. Is there any kind of one strong matchup that you think is going to work? Well, I think that uh, we have two strong candidates, or the Republicans do, and that would be uh, Rick Berg and uh, Kevin Kramer. They're both well known. Uh, Rick Berg is a senator from Fargo, a state senator from Fargo, who is, I believe, the majority whip in the, in the no, to be the House, I believe he's in the House. Uh, and uh, Kevin Kramer has been in state politics for a long time. Oh, he was the director of tourism for a while, and then he was uh, somewhere else, and now he's uh, on the Public Service Commission. So he's, he's fairly well known through the state. And he ran against uh, Pomeroy in 96 and 98, as I recall, and uh, lost both those times. So I, I supported him back then, um, but I think this time around, I think we need a new face. And I think Rick Berg's a very strong uh, candidate. I like Rick a lot. I like Kevin a lot too, but I think I'll probably be casting my vote toward Rick because he hasn't run against uh, Earl Pomeroy. He hasn't lost. Uh, and uh, I don't know, he just seems a real attractive candidate. He seems real sincere. And uh, not that Kevin isn't, but Kevin's been around in politics a long time. And I don't know, Rick seems a little, more free of any sort of influences to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm tending toward uh, his candidacy. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for spending time with us and sharing your knowledge with us. We wish you the best of luck. And well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Rich. And you heard it here first. So, In local weather, the sun peaked out through the clouds to raise our temperature to around 47 degrees today. It was a windy day as well with gusts, uh, southern gusts as high as 24 miles an hour. Tonight's low will be around 32 and winds will stick around 14 miles an hour from the west. We'll take a look at our five day forecast now. You can see that the high temperatures will remain around the mid 30s and lows around 20 degrees. We have a 20% chance of snow Friday, but the weekend should be mostly sunny and enjoyable for people participating in running all the green and the college's semi-formal. Well, in sports, uh, there's not much happening, but uh, you have a few more hours to fill out a March Madness bracket sponsored by Student Senate and the Student Media Center and a chance at winning $100. Brackets are available at the Linksteads Post Office and need to be submitted in a box at the Post Office by 12 midnight tonight. The national tournament begins tomorrow on CBS at 11.25 a.m. Well, thanks for tuning in to Jamestown's Thursday Evening News. I'm Richard Schmidt, connecting the campus with the community. Have a great night.